Boom! What's good, my people? We're back again for another one after a little bit of time, guys. Back for another one on this year, the one and only Mr. Lex Vlogs. Welcome to a Mr. Lex Vlogs. <laughs> Welcome back my people, of course I'm your boy Mr. Lex, for those of you who don't know, and of course this is where I tell you my views on a number of things taking place in Dominica, the Caribbean and the rest of the world by extension. So with that said guys, definitely subscribe. If you're new to this channel guys, definitely subscribe. If you're not new and still have been watching this year videos guys, subscribe to this year channel. Like I said before guys, it is very tasking but I do enjoy doing this year vlogs right there when it comes down to the certain expressions and thought processes that tend to be had on different various or variations of topics. Guys. So with that said guys, let us look first at what we are seeing right there guys, and of course we are down to two active cases in the nature of the Caribbean Dominica for which if you scroll over down you will see total recovers or the total who have recovered 163 individuals and of course the total confirmed cases with that of 165 for which we have realized that they have started giving second doses for which the first dose was that of 17,775 and the second dose has been that of 337 individuals who have taken the second dose now guys I want you guys to keep in mind that the two active cases are not as a result of the individuals taking the doses of the oops i almost said the word right there guys the rona solution so to speak right there guys so you have to keep that in mind is not as a result of these things doesn't mean that this is the reason why cases are going down because it is a known fact that this thing is not a cure but some sort of prevention mechanisms for people not to get it. So the people who have recovered from this thing is not as a result of this Rona solution that you're putting out there. Which makes you think that if this is not a mechanism that is a cure, then what is the point of taking it in the first place? Anyways guys, hopefully the 17,700 and whatever, 75 individuals will also take the second Rona solution um, right there guys. Cuba actually has developed another one and um, hopefully if I get that for you guys, I'll actually show it to you. But Cuba um, has developed their own Rona solution. And keep in mind guys, they also stated that it is very safe right there. Even children can take it. So that is what Cuba has developed. I actually sent this out to a number of places and they said that yes, it's true. So Cuba, make up yourself for finding an innovative way despite the odds, man, of what they put on you guys. You guys are still doing your thing. Kudos to you for figuring out something that is actually safe based on what they say. The WHO actually accepted it as well so i personally don't have a take on this thing per se i still will not advise people taking any type of these kind of things but when it comes down to the safety mechanisms of which they have developed it i would say if you have to take one the cuba one would be the best one to take of course we know about the astrazeneca one which is in dominican and the caribbean which of course a number of countries have banned by the way they have banned but of course they're accepting this so i'm guessing if you have to actually do one do the cuba one right there i think they should send this down to dominica instead of the rubbish that they actually have all over the place right there and then anyways guys with that said moving all across we're not too far but down to saint vincent and the grenadines guys la sofria is acting up again Well, I shouldn't say acting up. It has been acting up for a while. It is just seemingly seeming to get worse, guys. And it seems like the volcano is very close to erupting when we see these kind of signs right there. I've also heard that the government of Dominica is stating that they want to allow the St. Vincent's to come in if there's a need for them to do so. But really and truly, in speaking with some St. Vincent's, they don't want to come to Dominica at all, irregardless of if it's to help or whatever. But I think you guys should probably take it. Dominica is a nice place. It's just that the economy is not doing well at all. So if you want to come and relax, stay away from all the smoke and stuff, come and relax, go on the beach, chill, go revive and vive, man. You can definitely try something or you can go to the other Caribbean islands, which are also allowing St. Vincent's to also come to the shores as well because of what is taking place. So guys, with that said, please be careful out there, okay? Please be careful out there. Now guys, back to Dominica when it comes down to a certain situation that is taking place in Portsmouth for which we saw this notice right there. Bus fare notice, guys, to the general public of the nature island Caribbean Dominica. They are notifying the bus drivers, of course, that effective Tuesday, 4th of May, which of course is next month, the commuters at the age of 18 and over are required to each pay the fixed one-way bus fare to and from Roseau as follows. Postmod commuters $9.75 EC dollars and Dubla Biosh Colio $6 EC dollars. And I'm guessing the one from Dubla Biosh Colio is most likely from Roseau to um, these areas and not Postmod because Postmod is much more closer to this area so I'm guessing that's what they're talking about right there. Now guys when it comes on to this situation I have a number of things to say. First of all 
Who gave these guys the right to do this? The poor smart bus operators and drivers are stating that hey, we have come together amongst ourselves and decided to put a figure forward that can meet the demands for which we are then seeking to make a better life for ourselves. However, on the flip side of this, we're asking who gave them the right and if it is possible that they can do this, then the other drivers in other areas who are also feeling the blunt of the struggle of the economy in Dominica, do they also have the right to then put their own prices as well? Because these are Apparently seems to be the postmod bus operators and drivers who come together to say this. What about the Mao bus drivers and operators? What about the Senjo operators and bus drivers? Do they also have to come together amongst themselves and say, hey, let us increase the prices as a result of inflation? By the way, guys, something I want you guys to also understand. Inflation, when it comes down to the percentage at which inflation happens, is at 3%. Per year. I remember this in Ross University. They actually match every year to give us 2 to 3 percent when it comes down to inflation every year and then an increase on our salaries right there, whether it is 2 or 3 based on the merit system that they were given when it comes down to the increase in salaries as well. So they were keeping up with the times of inflation, but I don't think the bus drivers have this. So bus drivers kind of have a lineage with this. However, still asking the same question what about the other people who are not getting an increase in salaries though? What about them who then have to pay more for the bus drivers or more for the operators, more mark you for driving from one place to the other when their salaries have not increased who then then so it so then it comes back in a full circle stating who then gives these bus drivers a right to increase their prices and then put that on the strain of the people who are not getting increase from their salaries things are going down we and all kind of things happening especially we hear that i think it was 0.125 percent that they're giving um teachers or something like that or or, or public servants some kind of thing like that which is not much i think it's about 10 between 10 to 20 dollars increase so based on how things are working based on the inflation percentage if you have to say a thousand dollars is the is the main thing that is thirty dollars so if they're giving you ten twenty dollars based of your salary that still doesn't meet the percentage for inflation in itself so that's not much of an increase at all <laughs> it's not much of an increase at all unless they're actually giving you a percentage increase on your salaries every year for inflation which of course bus drivers don't get but then again it still comes down to okay who gave them that privilege to do that if they do then does that mean the other bus drivers across the bottom of dominica do also have the right to increase their prices as well what are your thoughts guys leave that of course in the comment box below i just thought this was very interesting when i heard that this particular situation took place i'm not saying that they shouldn't get increased of course because everything seems to be going up but what about those who cannot then meet that quota so that means you have to end up paying more for buses to bring you at work while you're still not getting an increase in salary so the so it's kind of an interesting scope, but look at it, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below and let me know what you have to see in this regard right there. And by the way, guys, they are also stating that this is also applicable to school people, people who go into schools. Now, previously, we said that passengers who are also attending the college or any educational institution would pay the children's rate, so to speak, of $5 to and from Rosu once they have... Um, the uniform on. The question is, are they then justified to put that on these individuals who are not working per se? Some of them, most of them are not working. Yet still, they have to pay an increase. That's very interesting. They have to pay an increase in bus fares and most of them are not working. So then you're trying to get an education. You're not working. You then have to pay more or put in more strain on your parents who also have to probably use the bus to then. It's an interesting dilemma right there, guys. What are your thoughts, man? Leave that, of course, in the comment box below. Now guys, yesterday I made a vlog, well not a vlog, a reaction on the police, um, Lincoln Corbett individual, if that is his name, I can't remember, but Lincoln I believe is his name. Yeah, the acting police individual. And I made a thing talking about he saw a vlog that was completely rubbish and whatnot. But guys, I knew I played the whole audio and everything, but I was more specifically focused on the part that he was talking about the vlog. But I noticed you guys also picked up the very thing as well. And I want you guys to listen to this, listen carefully to the audio again. A large quantity of United States currency equivalent to 1.3267.27 million dollars was recovered. Let's repeat that. 1 million dollars cents was recovered. That is EC equivalent. Two men, Irony Asted Stedman of St. Joseph and Kendall Sylvester of Woodford Hill were arrested on suspicion of money laundering. So they were arrested on suspicion of money laundering. Now guys, when it comes down to money laundering, it's not just one set of people who are doing this. It's a plethora of individuals who are in that circle who are involved in these kind of things. If you listen to CSI and there's a number of, of um, this kind of cases like this, you realize that there's a, a hierarchy, so to speak, on how the money tend to come to them. I don't know if that system is in Dominica, but I want you guys to continue listening right there. 2021, pursuant to the provision of the Process of Crime Act, of 2013, a forfeiture application was filed at the, the magistrate's court for the forfeiture of the cash. 
On Tuesday, March 30th, 2021, the seized cash was deposited in the, in the detained funds account at the National Bank of Dominica Limited. The two men were released really pending investigations for more than laundering by the Financial Intelligence Unit at the FIU. Now, if you notice, he stated that the two men were released pending investigation. Now, guys, most times when they use the, 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 the phrase investigation, they actually mean keeping your stuff for further investigation. But they released the guys, right? Guys, keep in mind, eh? Keep in mind, they were arrested for suspicion of money laundering and they released them without charge, it seems. They, they didn't charge them, you know, which means that money laundering took place. A suspicion of money laundering took place. And Matthew, they took the money that they found. 500 and something thousand US dollars. They took and put it in the bank right there. Keep in mind, they released these guys without charge. I didn't hear them say anything about charge. They released them. But they took monies found for suspicion of money laundering that they put in a bank, guys. Which means that there's some fishy business happening right there. Because they actually got some monies with some individuals that they put in a bank. I like to, pick, I like to take my time and break things down for you guys. So listen to this right there. It's been suggested on social media and other medium that the car seized was found at a building at Vicar's. This is erroneous, malicious, and I think calculated to destroy the reputation of innocent law-abiding citizens. To reiterate, the cash was not found in Vicars and had nothing to do with anybody living in the village of Vicars. It's interesting that he stated this. Remember guys, the cash was found in where? Pay Bush. He's then stating to you that it has absolutely nothing to do, even though they released the individuals that they found without charge for suspicion of money laundering yet still this guy is stating this right there let me play it again for you i had nothing to do with anybody living in the village of Vicars. how do you know that though that is my question right there because you say you do an investigation you released the two individuals without charge so this money came from somewhere not true yet still he's telling us the public that this has no lineage or linkage to do with anybody in Vicars. how do you know this though if your investigation is not done yet or are you just telling the public this to sensitize the public hey no linkage between anybody from Vicars or from Vickers, you then take the money that these individuals have and I bet you that this case is going to die. I bet you because apparently it could most likely be linked to somebody in Vickers. So guys, like I told you before, I do not trust anything that the police has to say because they like to cover up for their own. They like to cover up for their own even though they know their own is lying. I was one of the witnesses witnessing these things myself. This is why I tell people I was happy to go inside there because I was observing everything and how they were operating all this guys that's one thing I get on par is how they operating that is one thing I get on par I wish I'd stay there a little longer figure out more of certain things that I still have some questions in especially dealing with CID <laughs> boy you don't hate me but I notice how they're operating they tend to cover their people even though they know even though they know their own people are lying I was speaking to a few police officers there you know especially when it comes into my case this guy saying what they say not making no sense but they cannot say anything Yet still they will come on social media and talk foolishness and say all kind of things that were never happening at all. It is interesting. That is why. Remember guys, some time back I was saying give the police a break. But I realized that there are a lot of people who are in prison right now because of what the police have stated that were not true. And individuals come in and pretend as if oh because I am the constable or acting whatever, chief whatever. That whatever I say is the truth. I could care less what you say. I stop believing anything that the police officers say. No, guys, don't get me wrong. There are police officers out there who are actually really and truly trying their best. The Inspector Wicks say, okay, you see an alien ship. I believe in, I believe in Inspector Wicks, you know. Because Inspector Wicks has a certain reputation that he has to keep. He has to keep these things. But the others, I cannot really trust, especially people in head. You don't know who is for who and who is what and this kind of things there and whatever, who says this. Guys, we have to be mindful about our very leaders themselves, you know, guys. Which brings me to my my point right there guys Martin Luther King stated this thing right there Martin Luther King jr. we need leaders not in love with money but in love with justice look at the state of Dominica if people are actually in love with justice you think the kind of craziness that's going on the corruption everything that seems to be across the board not just in a political arena but across the board guys would happen 
Not enough with publicity, but in love with humanity in itself. This is why we voted these people to come and represent us. But then again, I'm thinking to myself, based on what I heard an African professor stating some time about guys, and I want you guys to listen carefully to this guy. He stated that the wisdom of the world is that the people get what they truly deserve. Let me say it again. The wisdom of the world is that the people get what they truly deserve. Oftentimes, we tend to look at the leaders as corrupt guys, but we fail to look at ourselves as the corrupt ones putting in corrupt leaders in society. It's interesting when I, guys, today I got this information right here, you know. It's interesting. Corrupt practices, for example, if we don't have good healthcare services, yet still leaders putting monies outside there to do all kind of things that the people cannot account for. Yet still the people are lacking in health services. Teachers are not getting adequate raises. People are suffering. All kind of things are happening. Yet monies are outside there doing God knows what. That is corruption in its fullest capabilities right there guys the people get what they truly deserve and understanding people putting back the same thing over and over it is said insanity is when you constantly do things over and over expecting a different result true what about it is not being insanity but the wickedness of people themselves who are also corrupt because they expect the same result to happen insanity keep in mind is when people do things over and over again expecting a different result but what are people doing the things over and over again knowing that the result is this way and expecting that result it is not insanity these people are equally as corrupt as the leaders that they put there were equally as corrupt as them it is interesting when you look at the full scope of things guys anyways this is pretty much all the boy has for this year vlog today guys let me know your thoughts in this regard leave that of course in the comment box below Don't don't forget to check out the reaction I did today as well. I really appreciate that. And of course, guys, it is really something else. But we must tell the wicked and people them to stop all their dirty ways. But with that said, guys, we ourselves, those who know better, must be real. Seek for positive change and be positive. And with that said, guys, with the most size as always, definitely stay prayed up. Welcome to our Mr. Licks Vlogs. One day me I will blow Something will go Wow! This life is a constant uphill battle But it's also filled with some beautiful moments